Hi, welcome back to my studio. Today is part one of creating this paper rosette art piece. Let me show you how I did it. So I started by choosing four different patterns from this American Vintage paper pad from, uh, by a Seven Gypsies. I chose two light and two dark. And then I put them on the scoreboard and scored every half inch all the way across the piece of paper. My scoreboard is only six and a half inches wide and these papers were eight so I had to score and then move that last bit over to finish the scoring. And I already had all my papers for my rosette scored but I'm just doing this piece to show you how I did it. But you'll need eight pieces all together, at least eight pieces if you're using eight by eight papers. And then once you have all your papers scored, you just fan fold them like I'm doing here on the score lines and just fold them all up. Once I get each piece folded, I go over each side of that folded piece again with my bone folder just to solidify or increase the creases. You can make these rosettes with larger pieces of paper too. Um, there's lots of videos and instructions online for making paper rosettes. So here I'm just bringing the ends of my rosettes together. I'm showing you that there's eight pieces there and I just alternated dark and light patterns. And then I have some double-sided tape and just put one length of tape along the very last scored section of one piece of paper and then you'll just attach that to the last scored section of the piece next to it, which is what I've done with all the previous pieces. The hardest part for me is getting the facing paper off of the tape once I burnish it down. I have that little piercer tool that does help to get underneath that top plastic piece and then I can grab it and remove it. And then I found um, as I was putting this together the easiest thing to do is line up, fold those edges over and line up one the outside edges so that they're even and then you can just hold those two edges once you get them together this last one was hard because of the tension on the rosette, but there I'm holding it and then you can just run your fingers across and secure that entire side of the papers. And that's it. It's really, really easy to do. It just takes a little bit of time, but I think it's really pretty. I love these vintage papers. This one was kind of like a travel. There's street signs and maps and postcards and I like the ones that just have the letters on them too. I love the faded old colors. So 
So now I need to cut two pieces of chipboard to cover the holes front and back on my rosette. So I just brought in my, I think it's inch and a half or two inch paper punch and punched out two circles to cover the middle. And I had trouble. There's one edge of this punch that isn't real sharp for some reason. And if I have a heavier paper, it just doesn't want to cut all the way through. But I end up with two decent circles, which are both going to be covered. So it, it doesn't matter if they're not, you know, just perfect. I could have used squares for that matter. Um, so then we're just going to glue those down to cover the holes. So I'm just getting a nice thick layer of this glue on the back of the cardboard circle and then I'm just going to press it down onto the rosette. Um, I like the ultimate glue. It's thick and what I like the most about it is that it grabs pretty quick. If you hold it for 30 seconds or so, even on um, pieces that are kind of hard to get glued together, it really does start to set up pretty fast. So I really, that's my preferred glue. And you can see if you pull the rosette in as I'm doing right there, making the hole smaller in essence, um, you get a little bit tighter fold or pleat in the papers. And then I'm just going to hold it for a few seconds until it grabs enough that I can flip the whole thing over. And once I have the circles glued down on both sides, then the rosette becomes a lot more stable. This double-sided paper made it hard for me to decide which side I wanted to use. Um, but I think the other side has more contrasting lights and dark, so I went with that. So I'm just doing the same thing here on the back and gluing this cardboard piece over the hole. And then I'll hold it down until it's grabbed enough that I can flip it back over again. And if you wanted to, I mean, you could just press it down and walk away for a little, you know, a little while, get a cup of coffee or whatever. And when you come back, that glue will have grabbed enough that you can flip it and do the other side or continue on. So I need to bring in a substrate that I can actually put my focal point on. And I have these cake cardboard thingies that I guess cake makers use to sit their layers of cake on. There they are. Show and serve cake circles. So I've had these for a long time. I use them to make paper wreaths. So this is sort of the same thing but different. Anyways, I needed something that I could put there in the middle to actually do my art piece on. So I thought that was a perfect substrate to use. And I just brought it in to make sure size-wise it was okay. I would have liked it maybe an inch bigger. So my idea was to put down some black acrylic paint and then some Mod Podge. I have Ultimate Matte, but I don't think it matters. And then some... Uh, kind of mustardy yellow and I wanted to get some crackles. I I wasn't real happy. I think I probably did it wrong. <laughs> it's been years since I've done this method of, cra you know, of obtaining crackles. So I think my top layers or the at least the layer of Mod Podge probably was too heavy. 
and I'm not sure if I was supposed to wait for the Mod Podge to partially dry, which I did not do, and you'll see. I just made a big mess. I did get some like really big cracks, and in the end, I ended up covering the whole thing up with collage and other things, so it really didn't make any difference. So I'm just going to speed through this so that you can see what I did, but I really could cut the whole thing out because in in actuality you don't even see any of it. So this is what I ended up with. There, like I said, some big crackles and it's almost completely dry. So I've chosen some vintage looking papers and copies of tickets and I'm just going to collage these papers on top of my non-crackled substrate. <laughs> None of it ends up really showing through in the end, maybe just a tiny little bit, so it's all good. Um, most of these are papers that I've printed out just on my inkjet printer with regular printer weight paper. So if you're doing that, if make sure that you put your glue or your adhesive both on the substrate that you're going on top of as well as on the back of your paper and then smooth it down with more um, adhesive on the front. That way you really avoid getting a lot of big bubbles underneath your paper because that's pretty aggravating. Excuse my head right there. My camera is directly overhead so <clears throat> anytime I end up having to lean over the least little bit and you're gonna see my head so I'm gonna speed through the rest of this now So now I'm just going to pick up some white gesso on my brayer and just put a real light layer across the face of these papers to, to push them back a little bit and bring the papers and that yellow background together a little bit more so there's not as much contrast going on. So I'll get the gesso on and then I'm just going to use a baby wipe and smear it around and lighten it up over some of the papers that I want to show more. And so that's what I'm doing here. So I wanted to bring this piece together just a little bit more. So I'm going to use this stencil by Crafters Workshop and put some white gesso. First I did it on my brayer, but <clears throat> then I switched to a makeup sponge because the brayer just wasn't working as well as I wanted it to. And I'm just gonna go over the whole face of this with the gesso and the stencil.
Next I'm going to use this Finnebar stamp and some black archival ink and just randomly place the image from the stamp around this art piece that I'm creating for my rosette. First I put it on that acrylic block, but then I decided I would get better partial impressions, which is what I wanted with the stamp if it was not on the block, so I take it off. So I just want a little bit here and there. I didn't want like full rectangular images of those bubbles. Next, I'm just going to go around the edges with black archival ink and sepia archival ink. The sepia first and then the black just on the very edges. And I think this just gives it a nice pop around the outside edge. So I decided that I didn't want like a main focal point. I just wanted some sedu subdued images all over. So I grabbed these parchment raw bonds by Seven Gypsies and it's the Live pattern. They have several different packets and they're just uh, t uh, parchment paper impregnated with inked images that you can just cut the little pieces out of the main big sheet and just use a craft stick or a bone folder and rub them on. So I chose several to put onto this piece and that's what I'm going to do now. I have several of the Seven Gypsies architectures um, pieces. They're like a sort of a, it's a sticker, but yet it's dimensional. It's not paper. It's sort of a silicone maybe based piece. Anyways, I thought this camera would maybe go with the theme and sort of be the main focal point on here. So I'm just going to decide where I want to put it. And I'm just going to sit it on there and look at it for a while and decide if I want to keep it, if I want to move it, or what I want to do with it. But for right now, it's just going to sit there for a bit. So now it's time to bring the rosette in and see how this little piece looks sitting on the rosette. Hopefully 
everything coordinates well and they look good together and I think they do. I'm liking it so far. Okay, I'm going to leave this as a part one. So come back tomorrow for part two and we'll finish it up. In the meantime, go make some art. Bye.